to try. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Checkered flag would be sweet. Break it up. Oh, it's crazy.
Spanish. <laughs> Welcome back to PTM Racing TV. We're alive here tonight at Thompson Speedway here in Thompson, Connecticut. Hi, everyone. I am Christian the Crusader Shriver, and I am bringing you this race from a hidden location far beyond our world and far beyond anyone's reach. I am in the Church of Horsepower, the Church of Speed, the Church of all that encompasses all of us from the Lord himself, the great Lord of Speed. He has, he has blessed us to have this church ceremony here tonight, so I am able to give you the internet. But because of that, I'm also running on pretty cruddy internet, so you got to deal with the sim racing apps tonight. Nonetheless, back to the back to the action here. Let's let's get it on down here to street stocks here for PTM Racing T and the Pedal the Metal Racing League series. Starting on the pole tonight, you see him right there. That's the Halvaline machine, the number 15 of Lance Brantlinger. So he's outside the Chevrolet Beast, number 84, Matthew Hoffert. Row number two, Cindy T Jeffrey Oaks in the 20 will go right beside with Cindy Taylor and the Doritos, number seven. I told her I was going to make fun of her for that. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, row number three is going to be Dave Mitchner. Or no, wait a minute. Dave Mitchner is behind there. So it looks like Dakota Bra has switched out positions here. I'm getting, looks like I mi miscalculation here. So Dakota Bra actually will be the outside of Dustin Rouse at 30. On the screen here, we're actually getting word that it was supposed to have been Dave Bitchner, but apparently not. So, in this case, yep, there's Jeffrey Oaks there, and then Dustin Rouse in that Camel 30. The outside of him, the Rusty Nuts of Dakota Bruh. Right number four, it's going to be Dave Bitchner in the three, and then <sighs> Bobby Conner, and I don't even know what the heck that is. Row number five, it's the Super Flow number eight of Keith Taylor, and it is outside. That's the 24, the boys of Caleb, the one you don't mess with Texas, McCarthy. Right number six. Dustin Slownaker, Sparkalicious, and the thank you under thank you taker number 50, and his outside in the nationwide machine. That's the 25 of Brian Rupert. And starting shotgun on our field tonight, Shane Ledoux and that Chevrolet City 51, and his outside. That's Chantel Pottle on the outside. All right, guys, work them on in. We'll get them ready to go here. 14 drivers at it here. And I'm going to real quick let everyone know I am not able to see the comment section here. So if there is stream issues or we have problems with the stream, be sure to let us know and be sure to keep us up to date on that. I will try to do our best, but, again, I am in a hidden location. This is not the location I was wanting to be in because, unfortunately, back at the palace, the Internet is still down. So right now we're, we're coming to you in the booth here in, in Thompson, Connecticut, but we're in a different area. I had to open up the church and say flat out we need to get this up and running. So let's get these guys on the track. So the Lord of Speed has blessed us for this one here tonight as we get ready to go green flag racing on this 63.63 mile track. Thompson International Speedway is out of here. Off the line through the chicane, through the turn one they go. Lance Brantlinger in the Halloween machine will work him on in the 15. He has that Brady for of Matthew Hoffert right beside him. Oh, Hoffy getting a little bit loose there out of turn two already. They're going to be a little bit hard to control on the first set for these 100 laps here. You can see immediately these guys going back and forth at it right now as the Raiders, number seven, is Cindy Taylor. Last, last, last Thursday, second place finisher trying to get in there, trying to get some position. He made up all oh, trouble there from Dakota Bra. Dakota Bra getting right in there with Cindy Taylor. They go three wide down the best stretch, and Steve Taylor gets a huge lick. Caution's coming out. Whoa. That was not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy down there, guys. You're going to see a lot of the movement earlier. You're going to see a lot of these guys going back and forth with one another. We're going to the PTM Instant Replay to show you what happened originally. To miss Cindy Taylor there, the Raiders. Number seven getting a huge lick there. We're going to show you what happened exactly here on the PTM replay. Looked like Dakota was just trying to make a move there. He saw the inside line and ended up giving Cindy the tag there. 
that spun her around and that ended up costing her a lot of time and momentum she'll get time to get back on that we're gonna go on board here with Dakota and just show you exactly what was his line of sight when that happened there here's a PTM instant replay here watch carefully Hoffy's getting loose Hoffer got loose there now to the inside goes Dakota he's trying to keep it stable keep it there but these street stocks are extremely wobbly and when that happens there is nowhere to go and then we'll go ahead and show you what happened there with Mr. Keith Taylor. Brother to Cindy Taylor there. We're quick. We're going to bring it on up here and show you what happened in that chaos. Yes. So there's Cindy already getting the spin. Watch Keith. Three wide. Hoffer gets tagged by Dave. Dave tags Hoffer. Goes back. Tags Keith. And Keith had nowhere to go. And unfortunately that brought out the early caution here. But we will re-rack, restack, and all that and get them ready to go here for some more green flag racing this next time by. It is early, folks, but these drivers are trying to hold themselves up and trying to keep themselves up into contention. It will be a matter it'll be a matter of time before they get everything burnt in and figured out. And we'll see how well it all plays out for them. You can see the marbles already on the top view there. That up on the top side, if you can get a good look right there out of Dakota's perspective, you can see how far. Besides the fact that you see Bobby Kahn's mouth, you can see how far those marbles have already built up on the track and on the surface. And that is what's really going to be the key factor for these drivers is where can they keep their lines at? How can they hold them? Because if they get too low to the bottom, there's the marbles there that will get them loose and they'll send them for a little ride. Once again, everyone at home, thanks so much for viewing in. Share us around, like us up here, and share us or follow us here at P10 Racing TV. We're so close to a milestone, guys, and we couldn't do it without you. But tonight, these street stock drivers want a little love and a little attention, and you know that you're good at giving it to them. So let's get them green flag racing this time by once again. Off turn four, green flags in the air. Right out of the start on me immediately. The 15 of Lance Brantlinger has yet to gone into victory lane this season. He's been trying to get there so close. Now he bat him on in out of turn one. He's got Jeffrey Oaks in the JMO auto body number 20. Trying to get the old red, white, and blue up into contention. We've got ourselves a battle for the lead. Whoa, contact made there, and Hoffy, whoa! Hoffer gets a big tag, and so does McCarthy. Oh, caution's coming out there. That was not what you wanted to see of your Hoffer doing it twice in a row. Causing the caution in that left side is jacked up. He has broke the suspension on there. Something not going right for him. We're going to the PTM Instant Replay to find out more of what happened there in this situation, in the chaos. Here's another look at it. Watch carefully in the back here. Watch very carefully. Watch Shane Ledoux. Hoffert has to back off. He doesn't want to spin Dustin. But gets a tag there from Ledoux. Ledoux had nowhere to go. Tags him and then BAM! Mikhail, the one you don't mess with. Texas McCarthy just getting a huge little lick and kiss to that, to that 84 Chevrolet and unfortunately causing damage to both drivers. We're going on board here with Miss McCarthy and show you exactly what was going through her view there. There's another look at it. Watch carefully. You can see how tight these guys are having to run this track. And it's usually easier to run with the late models, but with these street stocks, it's a lot easier said than done to really maintain and master. And you can see right there where all the trouble started. Ugh, ouch. And McCarthy just taking a sizable lick and unfortunately nowhere to go. We'll see. She seems to have got it all fixed up, actually. She has gone into pit side and got it taken care of. As we bring him on back up here, it, it appears Jeffrey Oaks is going to lead the pack in the old red, white, and blue JMO auto body. Number 20, yet to win a race in the iRacing circuit. But would it be something if he can end that here tonight? And to get everyone at home, if you do see frame rate issues or something goes wrong, let, just let us know in the comments. I'll tell you right now, though, it's more than likely the internet. Like I said, we had a huge storm that knocked us out a while back. And then we had another storm a couple of days ago, and I had to move all the stuff over and had to move the center over. So, again, we do apologize in advance for technical difficulties and the fact that we're not showing the new overlay we created for you. But I promise you that hopefully the commentary makes up for it and these guys definitely can put on a show that'll make up for it anyway either or else. so thanks again to everybody that tunes in each and every time out we appreciate you all nonetheless off the start here 
We'll get the one to go this next time by, I believe, Jeffrey Oaks. Good old, big old Oaksy in the number 20. We'll lead him off. Lance Brantlinger in the Haveline 15 in the hunt as well. He's in second place right now. Dakota Brewer in the Rusty Nuts 52. The 21, even though his number's not popping up, of Bobby Kahn and, well... I'm just gonna let you guys look at it and just you can figure out for yourselves what the heck we're looking at. I don't even know anymore. Of all the things I've seen in this series and everywhere else, why? What? Who came up with this? I have so many questions. Anyway, Dave Vischer in the three as well, running in four slot right now. 30 in the camo, Dustin Rouse and that little hiccup there with Hoffert. He still is in the hunt. And then you got Dustin Slonaker in the 50 right behind all of them. And the thank you taker number 50 machine. We're staying under caution. We got to get the drivers around still. We had a few drivers that need to get back onto the lead lap and taken care of here. They will get that opportunity until the halfway point. After that, no more give me's, no more freebies. What you got is what you got. If you don't like it, you can deal with it. But nonetheless. They're going to bring him on down, and next time by will be the one to go, I believe. Packed crowd on hand here tonight at Thompson International Speedway. All ready to witness these rookie drivers in those street stocks trying to make a name for themselves and get themselves up into contention to one day be even more than what they're dealing with right now. But to do so, they're going to have to find a way to master the street stocks because next season I'm not going to tell you what we're going to run yet but I can tell you next season coming in be in for a surprise we've got something brand new whipping up and we got something awesome coming in to showcase to you guys and gals at home and all as well to all the other leagues as well we do appreciate everyone that does help us out with all these things we're getting ready to go next time by looks like we're finally getting everyone all situated out here The one to go has been initiated. All drivers are in position. All drivers are ready. Thompson International Speedway will see these street stock drivers go back green one more time around here this time by. They'll come down the back straightaway. Can Jeffrey Oaks hold the bottom line away from Brantlinger or will Brantlinger be able to do what Oaksy did earlier and run the high side, run its course and get past him early? They have to be careful. They've got to watch their marks. they got to watch their spots. You got Bobby Kahn right behind him. The old Rattlesnake Pony Express, whatever he's called these days, is right behind him here. And Dakota Bro, the Rusty Nuts 52, the only other winner to win besides Jonathan Atkins, Chantel Throttle Pottle, and a few others here. So we'll see how it all plays out here. Here they come down out of turn two. Down the outside, here comes Lance Brandlinger now in the Havoline 15. Works the outside of the 52 of Rusty Nuts. 52 of Dakota Bra. Dakota Bra old, holding his own there on the turn three, going in and turn four. Ah, oh, Brantlinger loose. He's in trouble. He's doing cartwheels. He's doing flips. They're not calling the caution, though. That was only one driver involved in that one. But what a way to go out in a tough break to say the least. Now they pitch her in the three, getting loose. He's got trouble there as he works him on down. He manages to save it. But holy smokes, these guys still have yet to get those tires burnt down. They keep overdriving the turn. You can see where the troubles are starting for these drivers. Bitchner is able to get it recentered and recourse, but as they work them on in now, just at the at the fifth of the way mark right now, currently a lead change in almost every direction. Which way to Sunday? Robert Kahn, the only other driver to win in this series right now as well. He's fighting him up, trying to get up there with Jeffrey Oaks, trying to end his campaign and his little Cinderella story to finally get a win in this season. He's only got one win from the NASCAR Heat Series in the trucks a long time ago, and I can guarantee you he is tired of saying that. He wants another win here with Pedal of the Metal. Work him on down now. Dakota Bro in the 52. Rusty Nutt still works him on in. Down at it to earn four. They battle him up. The driver's coming in. They're coming quick. Not a lot of balance to be had right now. So what you're going to see a lot of this kind of straight line racing to an extent. When the passes come, though, they come. It's just right now they're trying to get those tires burnt in and get situated out before they get too situ before they get too all over the place. As that 25 there as well works them on in. Brian Rupert in the Nationwide 25 trying to get up there with the 50 of Dustin Sonaker and the under and the thank you taker machine. Having some 
connect. Having some internet issues, it appears. Meanwhile, the, the Raiders, number seven, Cindy Taylor, works them on down the back straightaway now. Here she comes. Trying to make a move there on Rupert. Trying to get the outside line to stick. Maybe trying to get the inside line as well. Last last Thursday's runner-up. The last time out on, th on Legend Series, she had been in contention the entire time, but it was not able to make the win around her brother. Meanwhile, her brother right now is all over the place, just trying to get some time back from earlier. As Cindy has now made the pass around Brian Rupert there. She now works him on in for seventh. In the early going still, you've got drivers still battling in here. Matthew Hofford still in pit road, pit side right now, but Robert Kahn's got company. Dakota Bruh is looking to challenge. The Rusty Nuts 52 now works them on in. Down, down at turn three. They'll go into turn four here. As Bobby Kahn and whatever the heck he's driving. I don't know what in God's blue earth he's driving. But he's going to run that 21 right up into turn one. They go into turn two here. Dakota Bruh and the Rusty Nuts 52 still trying to hold his own and trying to get up there with him. Keith Taylor is finally exiting pit road after the damage sustained earlier. Work them on down now at turn three going into turn four. Setting him up still to try to get him into contention, trying to get something going here. Here comes Dakota Braun out of the inside. Look at this maneuver here. Right down low, into the middle, sings it down low, makes the move pass. Robert Kahn, what a move. Dakota Braun had all the momentum and all the time in the world. You would have thought he was Neo from, you would have thought he was from the Matrix because he just slowed down time and made his pass so smooth around Robert Kahn. Great maneuver there, but I can tell you, Robert Kahn don't like to be played like that. The rattlesnake will strike eventually as we are now at the quarter mark here. 26 laps in with a hunt with only about 75 to go. They're all chasing down that driver right there, Jeffrey Oaks, who I got to believe right now is in comfort zone territory. He is your race leader with a sizable lead over Dakota Bra and Robert Kahn. But any mistake on this track, as you saw earlier, doesn't matter if you're leading. It doesn't matter if you're in second. One mistake. One wrong move. That is all it takes here. As they work them on in now, we, we move our attention there to the 30 camo machine of Dustin Rouse. He's got company with Shane Ledoux battling him out for fourth. You can hear some of the cars hitting the wall there. That's how close they're getting off those exits. They're really pushing them as hard as they can. And they're going to bump into that, into that wall there as they work them off exit. This track is not known for clean and hard passes. This track is more known for consistent and maneuverability and just waiting for the right moment. And right here, here it comes now. Shane Ledoux in the 51 Chevrolet City Machine going to work them on in. Trying to make the pass around Rouse. Ledoux has really not had the best of seasons, but when he's, right, when he's on the track and he's at his game, he's at his best, he now overtakes for fourth. Ledoux works them on in. You can see some of the braking there. He's actually kind of tapping the brake there to get the car to set. I just now noticed that with the tires there, and that's one thing I can tell you from earlier is that when you're running this track, you need to tap the brake when you get into burned car territory. What does that mean exactly? It means when your tires burn up a bit, you got to really watch your momentum and really watch your spot and your standpoint. Otherwise, you can get loose and really out of shape there as Kayla, the one you don't mess with, Texas McCarthy, right there behind of Chantel, the throttle bottle, and the Pepsi Cola number five. Meanwhile, Keith Taylor trying to get the Superflow number eight back into the hunt, but he is right now two laps down, it appears, or seven laps down, it appears. Working them on in now. He's going to try to make his move around. Dustin Sonica! I might have just jinxed him there. Slope the Superflow has spun out out of turn four there. Two there. Tough break there for Keith Taylor. He can't seem to catch a break after that win he had. On last Thursday night, the last time we were with you guys, he managed to get a Legends victory. And for the first time, was able to defeat and beat the streak of Lucas Gorman. Right now, that ca the boys, 24 Cowboys machine of Kayla McCarthy. Right now in the top 10, but she doesn't want that. She wants more. She's going to try to get up there with the Pepsi Cola number 5 of Chantel, the throttle pottle. Working them on down now. Turn one, they'll go into turn two. I had the pleasure to talk with McCarthy and Paul and Chantel the throttle earlier. I can tell you right now, these women are feisty. They are hard-headed. And when they got everything figured out, they will battle to their dearest desire if it means getting that win. But they will not try to spin anybody until it all matters or when you really need to. That was what I was told from them. Although I can tell you, these are two of the cleanest women out on the tracks anytime you see them out. Two of the hardest racers in general, in my opinion. They have nothing to lose and nothing to gain 
other than just the respect and admiration of their peers as Dustin Slonaker has been passed around for eighth there in the 50 machine. Looks like might be having some troubles there. He's disappearing in and out like the Undertaker in a, in a WWE event. When the lights go out, he's gone. When the lights come on, he's back. And that's exactly what's going on right now for him. But Chantel is making that work for her. She's now overtaken for eighth with Kayla McCarthy right behind her. We work him on now down. 22 laps in for Matthew Hoffert on the behind list. He's going to try and catch up there with the Raiders, number seven of Cindy Taylor. And Cindy Taylor right now, after that second place finish, she's been struggling a little bit in the street stock. She told me earlier, you know, I really want to be better at these street stocks, but it seems like no matter what I do, I can't figure them out. She said she has been practicing and she's been really been figuring things out. And she's hoping to finally get a win in like the Raiders finally did here tonight in Las Vegas, of all things. Surprise, surprise. Whoa, Dustin Rouse in the, the 30 machine getting a little bit looser out of turn two. Rouse now going to the outside. It's the middle line trying to stay out of trouble there. Cindy Taylor right in with him. We work him on down now the front straightaway here. Here comes Dustin Rouse. Cindy Taylor making the pass for fifth. You've got a new top five point standing as we work him on in. Cindy Taylor still in the hunt. So is Dustin Rouse. Dakota Brud needs a strong finish and a strong miracle here because he has yet to been in victory lane in a while. And he is very close to the points, I believe, right? He is in the top three by no less than three points between the drivers. Wait a minute. And it looks like Bra has got trouble. The 52 has spun out on, on the front stretch. Caution's coming out. What on earth happened there? What the hey? What happened? The Rusty Nuts 52 Dakota Bra. We were just talking to him, and I think I gave him the old broadcaster curse. That left side is broken yet again, like Matthew Hoffert's there. We're going to go and find out what happened exactly. We're going to go ahead and bring it on the instant replay and see what was the culprit. Although I just saw what it was, and you might be interested to see this one. Take a close look here. Watch this. Come down the back straightaway. And watch them work in turn three going into four. Look at how close the Bobby Khan's going to get with Dakota Bruh. Side by side. And Bruh just tags him there into it one another rose up on the wall but the rear end is completely shot and he had nowhere to go and nothing he could do there Bobby Khan able to escape with mercy there thankfully it is not the halfway point yet so Dakota will be able to get some time back we're actually going to go on board here with him and show you what it was like in his perspective you're on board here with Dakota bro why don't you take a close look at that right side and the left side as well. Look at how many marbles are up there, man. You can't make a mistake there whatsoever. But it's so easy to do it when you're going like that because you can just do that right there. Like I said, Bobby Khan gained to get the better end of the stick. But unfortunately, bruh, with serious problems. And I'm not talking about something they can fix right away. They've got some work to do on that one. Dave Bichner will get some time back, it looks like. Maybe not. Matthew Hoffert's definitely going to get a few laps back after that one. Don't believe he's going to get the full end of what he lost. Unfortunately, this doesn't work that way, especially on a track like this. Remember, guys, these are rookie drivers and drivers still figuring everything out. They are strong individuals, though. They've been figuring things more and more. They've been practicing their tail ends off. And Thompson International Speedway is not an easy track to master and not an easy track to run by any means the imagination. There's always been a debate on whether or not this track should ever be ran for the league stuff, but I can tell you that when you got it all set up and figured out right, and you're running the right cars, this is a good track to run. This is a good track to use. It's all about just making sure you got the right car and the right mo and the right moment to make your moves. And Dakota Bro, unfortunately. Got kind of caught up in that situation, but they brought him on back out. McCarthy, Cindy Taylor will be the front ladies on the field. The front runners will stay out, and this might actually play in the strategy of McCarthy. She stayed out for quite a while, but Cindy Taylor actually went into pit road a little sooner than her. So unless Taylor is able to get a better restart, I think, I think McCarthy actually has a chance here. Even though the tires are more burnt in, hear me out. 
McCarthy doesn't have to really worry about overdriving it because the tires are burnt in already. So she can literally go outside or low, floor it if she needs to, and actually hold that in there. If there's one thing I can tell you guys that from experience on this track is that if you got the car burnt in just enough, the tires actually kind of mold into the turns better for the street stocks especially. And they really give you a better braking point and a better point to actually get into position for that big finish. But nevertheless, we'll see how it all plays out here as we're almost at the halfway point. And again, I can't quite see in the comments section at the moment, but anyone out there that is tuning in, thank you so much for all your love and support. Really wish we can get back to normal, we get back to reality here, but you know, until Tuesday rolls around, I don't know when that's going to all come by, but nonetheless, you know, for everyone that's been working with us and PTM Racing TV in general, thank you so much for everything and we, uh, we hope you got we hope we've brought on something good for you guys and hopefully put on a show at least. So Lance Brandlinger looks like he's going to get his last back as well. Caution staying out for now. They've got the one to go, though. Don't you know just yet, folks. We heard that. We only got a one to go right now. Eh, nope, nope. We're going to keep it under yellow. So real quick, though, before we get continue on, let's go ahead and show you the track tech talk here tonight. Again, we are at Thompson International Speedway here. The length, 0.63 miles, four turns in total. This location is in Thompson, Connecticut of the United States, of course. It's the the uh, setup they're doing it tonight is the Thompson Speed International Speedway for the street stocks. Fixed setups on all of them. The weather is constant with dynamic sky right now. It looks pretty clear out there, only 78 degrees in Fahrenheit. Track, they'll hurt 21 degrees in Fahrenheit, which means that track has burned those tires up more than you know it. And with those marbles moving around, that's definitely going to give them big problems and trouble. The wind's north at 2 miles per hour, and that's really all you need to know for this 100-lap race here tonight. Looks like I think we're going to bring him around one more time by. And then we will initiate the queue. We will initiate the restart. Your top five right now. Taylor, McCarthy... Sonaker, Khan, and I believe Chantel the Throttle is, yep, Chantel the Throttle is your sixth slot. Oh, wait a minute, hold on a minute. It looks like the scoreboard's getting confused even for me. I said Dave Bitchner up there, but Dave right now is not in contention. Either is Dakota. They should be back in the back, so it looks like the scoreboard is having some troubles manipulating everything here. Jane Ledoux will make his way around. Let's see if we can find those two there. There they are back there. There's Lance. There's Dave. And then here comes Dakota. So we'll bring him on around now. Get the camera all situated out. Yellow flag high in the air. That only signifies the one to go. Here in just a little bit. They'll go to the halfway point. Then they'll get going. But yeah, Taylor, McCarthy... So Naker, Khan. Uh, looks, looks like actually maybe Con, maybe So Naker is not in this anymore. Looks like or he just disappeared like Undertaker does usually. So I guess top three actually is McCarthy, uh, Khan, um, Hoffert, and Throttle Hoddle. Neff. And then you got Oaksy, Jeff Oaks, the 20 and the 30 of Dustin Rouse, 15 of Lance Brantlinger. There's there's Dustin So Naker. And then the three of Dave Bichner. And Brian Ripper in the 25 is put at pit side tonight. Something not going right for him here. Tough break there for the young driver. The young, the young man coming to us here tonight. And unfortunately had to make a little bit of a travel adjustment and travel arrangement. As you've seen the fans social distancing as well. But still a good crowd on hand though nonetheless. We'll bring him on around and we'll get past the halfway point and we'll get the green flag racing here in a little bit. But look at this. The ladies of our field, man, they're in it to win it. Top five. You got four you've got three of them that are literally in the top draw right now. Say what you will, folks, but these, these gals will not give an inch to anybody and they'll run when they need to, as hard as they need to. But you got Bobby Kahn still in there as well as the as Jeffrey Oaks and that 20 machine. 
work them on down now the back straightaway work them on turn three into four we'll get these drivers and the cars and the stars ready to go caution is going out we're bringing them on in here we go this time by and no start why not okay now we've got that and I don't even know what the truck just did there <laughs> A cartwheel and a half, and still he managed to land it perfectly like it was nothing. That makes no sense. <laughs> anyway, well, I think this will be the one to go this time by. I don't think they're. I don't think we will see any more wave rounds. Your top five right now: five Oxy, the fourth Con, third Chantel, the throttle bottle, then two front runners McCarthy and the 24 Good Boys Cowboys Machine, and Doritos number seven Cindy Taylor. Your front runners here tonight. Here we go. Green flag high in the air. Off that restart now down out on the front straightaway here. We'll see how well those tires hold up and how they hold themselves out here. You can see McCarthy trying to get a good run there on the on the outside, trying to get a push there. Works them on in now. Here they come down the back straightaway. McCarthy trying to get in there with Taylor, trying to get the inside line. Look at this maneuver there by McCarthy to the inside. Here comes the Dude Boys. Oh, no. She got loose. Still out of turn four. She's got trouble. Watch out. We've got trouble on the front stretch. Ow, oh, no, no. Sonaker and McCarthy getting into it with one another. Unfortunately, nowhere to go. Let's go to the instant replay and find out what happened exactly there. That was not what you wanted to see if you're McCarthy. I think she got into the marbles there. We'll go on the onboard in a minute. Take a close look here, folks. Got a good run. Actually, Oxy got loose there and actually had trouble. We'll see what happened to Oxy in a minute, but McCarthy had nowhere to go and unfortunately tagging Slonaker there. Slonaker had nowhere he could have been other than right in front right in front of her, if you will. Here is the PTM instant replay on the cockpit view here. Watch carefully here, folks. Watch this maneuver, man. She got a good run there. Got the draft. Cindy Taylor gives a bobble there. She opens up the bottom. And you can see that's just a whole other world to try to work around. She's trying to get the momentum going, but she overthrottled it when she was in the grass to try to get back into position. And unfortunately, nowhere to go. And that's what it's like upside down, folks. Man, oh man, oh man. That was a hard, hard lick to say the least there. Now we're going to go over to Jeffrey Oak's side of this and see what exactly happened with him there. I believe he just got spun out on his own. Let's take a look here. Oh, a little contact on Dave Bichner there in the three. The old Punisher three got a little bit punished, if you will. No pun intended. But that's all Oaksy, man. He just overdid the turn. When you spin the tires like that, folks, they're hard to control in these street stocks. Matter of fact, they're hard to control on anything, really. And unfortunately, that's going to put him way back in the pack here. All that time and ground he made up earlier, he's going to have to try to make it up later. Cindy Taylor, though, is currently your front runner. She's still in it. She, she's finished second place I don't know how many times in any series. She's been in the podium quite a bit. She's yet to finally get that win in. But will this end tonight? Or will Bobby Kahn, and I still don't even know what in God's dark green earth I'm looking at, can he be the one to take this one in here? We will see here as they work him on down. I believe McCarthy is still having troubles there. Looks like problems for her. And unfortunately, that's not going to vote well for her, to say the least here. McCarthy has just been absolutely fighting all the troubles and demons in any series she's yet to win since the first race of the season in the legends when she won at five five speedway and managed to pull off a great battle there with that 21 the old rattlesnake of robert Kahn. and then in the coming weeks it was really just kind of a toss-up at the street stocks you saw it live on our end Chantel the throttle bottle defeating jonathan atkins and yours truly at charlotte motor speedway in a tremendous battle at South Boston, though, it was Dakota Bruh coming in to make a save and make a battle and make a stint at getting himself into the winner's circle. And then after that, it was Atkins to join in at Phoenix with a huge battle there between Bruh as well. And then I believe, and then Bruh was pretty much just 
in contention to keep on battling and winning for his spot, but nonetheless, we haven't we haven't really seen too many drivers get double two in it, two in any series. But as we get down to the green flag here on the front stretch, we'll see if maybe that changes here a little bit. Woo, a little bit of contact there. We had that McCarthy in the 24. McCarthy getting into it a little bit there. They work him on the outside now. Shane Ledoux's got company. Here comes Lance Brantlinger in the Halloween lead, number 15. Work them on down now to turn three. They go into turn four. The Rusty Nuts of Dakota Brud, the 52. That will do battle with the, the Camouflage Camel Machine. The True Timber, number 30 of Dustin Rouse. Rouse in the hunt. Robbie Kahn has now overtaken for the lead. Here. Oh, Benchner yet again loose. We're three wide down the back stretch. Bro, backed off. I don't even think he wanted to do that, but they went three wide down the back straightaway. Managed to hold it quite well. They work him on down out of the front stretch out of turn four, and it looks like Rouse is going to get a better run there than what happened with Bitchner there. Bitchner, unfortunately, struggling to get his line back and get momentum set up. Work them on down now the back straightaway here. Cindy Taylor giving it everything she can here. Works them on in turn three going into turn four. She's currently in the fourth slot after some troubles. Oh, trouble there for Jeffrey Oaks. Looks like might have got into a little bit there with Chantel the throttle and Lance Brandlinger. They're able to keep themselves stable. Three wide, they come down at turn two. They hold it, and Brandlinger spun out on the turn two. What on earth is going on? Rouse has backed off and slowed down. What is going on right now? These guys are all over the place and all over in position. This is not what we were expecting. Nonetheless, the caution has not come out. They are keeping it going because two cars were not tied to a wreck there they were all individual and when that happens there's not really much else you can do there work them on in now brian rupert the 25 machine just trying to get some points back at this point he's out of contention he's 20 it's a good chunk of laps down he's trying to figure something out though maybe get a little lucky if you will dakota bro and the rusty nuts 52 works them on in out of turn two cindy taylor having some troubles there connecting with her car 35 laps remaining in this one. They work them on down. Cindy Terry. Whoa, look out there. McCarthy getting right in there. Rupert, Rupert in the wall. In the wall. Back into Chantel. Chantel's got trouble. A huge lick from Rupert. Rupert had nowhere to go. And Chantel unfortunately got the blunt of it. Seems like no matter where we go, there always seems to be trouble after that first race win. And it's hard to figure out why that is, but the caution has come out now, and probably the best time for that. We've got two of them involved there, Chantel and Dustin Sloanaker. I don't know how many times Sloanaker has been in something this season, but he's got trouble yet again as the thank you taker number 50 has blown the motor, and he is in trouble here. Let's go to the replay and find out what happened here. All right, we've got the camera here on Sonaker. Let's see here very closely. We know Chantel got loose and spun out. She's trying to get everything situated out and back up. She spun the tires and oh, man. Sonaker had to do a cartwheeler too just to say how he approved of that. Chantel, unfortunately, just getting in the grass and couldn't get that car re-centered out, re-stretched. And unfortunately, Sonaker getting the worst of it. Let's go on board here with Sonaker and just show you what exactly he was seeing when he had that happen to him. Holy smokes. They're on board here with Sonaker. Works the middle trying to hold everything in. And Chantel had nowhere she could get out of there. That, Unfortunately, the car is struggling. And, well, you heard that. I think we all know what that sound is. The motor goes. And now it's time to pit it in and get something fixed. We'll get them all situated out and get them ready to go yet again. Everyone's still out there watching. Thanks again for tuning on in to PTM Racing TV and choosing how to choose your Sunday here tonight. We'll have just under 30 laps remaining in this one once we've got all the cars situated out and figured out. I don't know if Slowmaker is going to get another instant repair in. I don't know if he's got time right now. I believe he right now is being towed in. He's running out of time though, and Bobby Kahn, I gotta believe right now he's in he's in Paradise City, despite the fact that car doesn't look like anything close to a paradise. But nevertheless, right now he currently is your front runner to win this. 
but right behind him, maybe a, maybe a new driver could win this as well. We don't know. Shane Ledoux in that 51 City Chevrolet machine, yet to been in victory. And actually, matter of fact, he's never been in a podium finish. And right now, he's in second place battling it here. Then you got the Miss Cindy Taylor in the Raiders number seven machine. She has been absolutely at it this entire season. And what a way to go out as she's able to finally get not off the podium, but finally a race victory. And then Dakota Bruh, I don't think I need to say anything more about him. He's just in the hunt for points right now. Not too far out of it here. He needs a good points get here to stay in contention to get that race, that season win. Because next time out, we'll be at USA International Speedway for these guys. And let me tell you something. If you thought this track was difficult, just wait till you see what these guys got to deal with at USA. That will be something to say the least. All right, work them on in. We'll get them side by side yet again. Lance Brandlinger again. He's still in it too, man. The Alvaline 15 machine has yet to really been out of contention this whole race. And the back the camo tr true timber number 30 of Dustin Rouse. Say what you will, but you know when he gets it going, he gets it going. He's got it figured out. He just needs a victory in. And then the three of the Punisher, Dave Bichner, as well has been, I wouldn't say an underdog, but he's been kind of in that stance of, he's been trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And he just can't seem to get the car to stabilize when he needs to right yet then and there. But I got to believe this next season, he might have something if, if he sticks around. We'll see. And then Brian Ripper, the Nationwide 25, he, it just seems like he's had some bad luck as of late, unfortunately. Just can't seem to get anything figured out. And then Chevrolet 84, Matthew Hoffer. So many podium finishes for him. Not a win, though, yet. And that's shocking, to say the least, here. He's got win. He has. He needs to get a win, and I believe soon enough, if he's in his, pin, in his mind, to prove that he deserves to be here. But I can tell you right now, Hoffy, don't give out, man. Don't ever give up. All right, folks. One to go this time. Bye. We're going to get ready to go green flag racing yet again here. Or not. Looks like we're still going to stay under caution. The flagmen and the race officials are telling me we're not yet ready to go because we are currently having a few drivers that need taken care of right now. So we will let them re catch up to the field and get ready and centered out. Also, folks, be sure to stick around after the race. We're going to do a little interview with our top two drivers here tonight. Or three drivers, not two. Why am I saying two? Brian Rupert looks like he's getting the old lucky dog. He'll get back up into the pack and some laps back. He's down quite a few laps, though, right now. Uh, it sound, sounds like we're getting worried. He had motor troubles earlier and unfortunately still has that trouble, but... He's kind of running off of excitement and fumes at this point, so he's just going to see what happens. Jeffrey Oaks in the 20. He's going to work him on in, get his lap back. The, look, the old lucky dog initiated to him. So I believe we will get them recentered up here. I'm not sure what's going on exactly right now with Jeffrey Oaks. He literally just ran up into the lead here. Work him on in. I guess off the green flag restart. I guess Oaks is going to get the lead here. Right off the start out of turn one. They're going to turn two. I don't know what the race officials were thinking there, but I think they just told me flat out. Oaks, he has the race lead. Work him on down the back straightaway here. Here they come now down turn three going into four. Oaks, going to go the outside. Three wide. They now take it there. They're going to hold it out. Look at this. Three wide still. They hold it. Oh, Oaks the end of the wall. Watch out back there. They're going to hold their own. That one gets into that one, and they are still side-by-side. Side. Bruh is trying to get around Ledoux. Ledoux trying to get up there with Bobby Kahn, but the old Rouse Nick is starting to run away because they're battling back there. Robert Kahn has got the outside line hooked in. He's going to the bottom. Oh, boom! Joe Kona, bro, loses it out of turn four. And look out down the front straightaway. We got trouble, big trouble. We got one upside down. That's Lance Brantlinger. Caution's coming out, folks. That was a huge lick. Oh, Ryan Rupert as well getting tagged there at the last minute. What a crazy, unfortunate situation of events. We're going to go to Dakota here and find out what happened. See if maybe there was a love tap in there or maybe he just got loose on his own. 
We're going to find out here. Here's the instant replay here. Watch careful. Look at how close these guys have to battle with each other. Ledoux and him just did not give out there. They did not quit. Uh, I'd say Brantlinger just barely touched him and grazed him. But it was enough. And the Rusty Nuts, unfortunately, went for an old ride there, if you will. And then Rance Brantlinger, unfortunately, getting stuck up in that one. He got a little lick or two there. Let's go on board here. See if maybe we can figure out what happened exactly. They work him on in. Barely taps. He's trying to back off. He doesn't quite get out of the way just yet. Fitzner makes his way around and then I gets really in trouble here and situated out and flips upside down. Unfortunately, nowhere to go. And then Brian. Oh, man. Thought he might have had enough space and ended up tagging him there. Did Lance. Tough break there for Rupert. He just can't get his laps back no matter what he does. guys bring them on down we'll get them all situated out your top five currently con ledoux taylor rouse and bichner are your front runners to win this one robert con's not out of the woods yet he's still got to try to hold these guys off here Bring him on around now, on the back straightaway here. Get them all situated out. Get them all rounded out, rounded about. Share us around if you guys would, if you like as well. Be sure to get, tell your friends, family to like us up, follow us up here on PTM Racing TV. Almost to the milestone, almost to the goal. And believe me when I say we couldn't do without you. And I know you guys get tired of us saying that, but we really do love you guys for all the support you bring to us. Bring him on around. I believe we're going to get the one to go. Although we've heard that before, and they have not brought him to the to the flag here. Work him on down the back straightaway. Down turn three. They go into four. Face trucks off. We're going green this time. Bye. Ledoux to the inside. Ledoux is going to try and get the run off of Bobby Kahn there. Work them on in down the front straightaway. Green flag high in the air. Right out of the gate, Khan has the run. He has the early advantage. Bichner getting a little bit in there. Now they go side by side, does Bichner and Oaks. Oaks able to hold his own to the outside. He's got Brantlinger right behind him there. They're going to battle it here down the back straightaway. Bichner going to the inside. Ah, he overdid it again, though. He overdrove it. Down the bottom, and a pop it, Hoppert. And a Hoppert he goes, and also into Rupert, and unfortunately... Causing some serious mayhem and chaos there. They're able to get everything situated out, though. I think they're going to stay green here. But I believe that's because Hoffer and them are laps down right now at the moment. Keith Taylor out of the building, out of sight and out of mind. He is not off again. Caution's coming out. And I believe Bitchner is going to be the result of that. Let's go back to the replay and show you what happened exactly here. Oh my goodness, folks, he just overdrove that one. You know, you hate saying that to a driver, but you gotta admit, you gotta own up to your own mistakes. Lord knows I do. Watch this. At turn three, going into four, he got too low to the bottom. The front tires were jumping, but the back tires were spinning. He gets into Hoffert. Chantel, the throttle gets a little tag. And unfortunately, nowhere to go but sideways and then out of sight. We'll go on board here with Bichner. Show you exactly what happened. Watch very carefully here. See right there. Just 
overdrove it. You got to get some banking in there and try to stabilize it. But, you know, when you're in that situation, there's really nowhere to go. And unfortunately, got a little tag or two in there. And that was what it was for these drivers. We're going to be down to 10 laps left. No timeouts. Green, white checkers. You only get three. So if you want to make it work, you better make it work now because you're running out of time, guys. We're going to see if maybe we can pull up the point stats right now and see exactly where we're at at the moment. But at the moment right now, I can tell you these guys and gals, I should say as well, have just been trying to scratch a claw their way on this Thompson track. This Thompson International Speedway has just been eating them up, to, to put it nicely here. It has not been an easy track to hit or an easy track to master for that matter. And it's showing. It's been burning them up a little bit. Work them on down the back straightaway here. You get a good look at all the drivers in the cars and the stars. All the drivers getting all situated out. All the drivers getting ready to go here. They just want a good card finish. They want a strong finish to say the least. We're gonna double up here. And they will be getting them ready to go. Green flag racing next time by. Bring them on around. Bobby Khan gonna get as close as he can there. He's going to try to work off the pace truck's draft and drift. The 51 Shane Ledoux and the 51 is going to try to get as much of a, a much, much of a run as he can to stay in it here. This is where it all boils down. Here we go off that restart. Ten to go now this time by Bobby Kahn immediately with the putting on a big old happy face. He's got the lead. They're immediately right off the gate though. Here comes Dakota Bruh and the Rusty Nuts 52 going to chase him down. Shane Ledoux in the city, 51 Chevrolet, going to work him on it as well. A little bit of contact made there by Oxy and Brantlinger. Brantlinger able to hold his own and keep himself stabilized there. They work him on down the front straight away. Here comes the throttle. Chantel Bottle in that number five machine. She's going to work him on in, try to get some positions back, but she's also four laps down at the moment, unfortunately. She's going to try to get some time back from this one, but right now she is definitely just trying to survive to the finish. Bobby Kahn has yet to go back, has yet to win any other title other than that one race at Daytona. He now looks like maybe he can get a chance out of here and get something going. Side by side goes Ledoux and Debra as well as Rouse and Pottle. They work him on down now in the back straightaway here. The battle is for second. Ledoux trying to get around the, the rusty nuts of Dakota Bruh, but that bottom line's tricky. You got to be careful. You got to keep him up there. You don't want to push him though too hard because they get in that wall. They're going to tap you there. Work them on down now. Turn one. They're going to turn two. Ledoux works them on in down on the bottom. Here he goes. He swings it on in, bringing the pain, bringing it all. Ledoux giving it everything he can, just trying to get a podium finish for the first time this season and also maybe something more. Down the front straight away we go. Ledoux and Bruh back and forth with one another right now still. No one giving an inch. No one giving any mo giving any wasted motion. This is what it's all about, especially on a hard track to master like this. They will take it right down out of turn four with their positioning intact. Here comes Dustin Rouse now in the 30. He works him on it. Dave Pitcher and the pusher gets a little bit of a tap there from Rouse. He goes up into the wall. He's able to save it and not get into McCarthy there. McCarthy trying to stay out of trouble, trying to stay out of Problem City yet again. She's trying to get the boys back into the hunt, but right now she's got some momentum to build up here because she is running further and further away. Here comes Ledoux now to the inside of the bra. Dakota Bruh right now is trying to hold that inside line away from Ledoux. Ledoux now says, I don't care about that. I'm going to make my move when I need to. We're down to four, three to go this time by. Down the back straightaway they go. Now Ledoux trying to give it everything he can. Trying to sneak his way into the bottom without touching. Look at the momentum Ledoux has. Look at the maneuverability there. Look at this. Side by side down the front straightaway they go. Turn three laps left in this one. Uh, turn one. Oh, no, no, no. 
Badu just over and drove it and he makes contact there with Brad. Unfortunately, that's going to end his night. Oh my goodness. Jeffrey Oaks in the 20 is going to get that JMO auto body machine up now into position here. He works them on in trying to get the old red, white, and blue. Something to go for here. He's currently some laps down at the moment. Lance Brandlinger is now your third place runner. Wait a minute, where is Lance anyway? Well, there he is. I was wondering where Lance was at. I was trying. To, now there he is. There he's working him on in the third slot. One to go this time by, and it's been a heated one to say the least here. Work them on in, bro. Looks like he's just gonna try for anything he can here. There sounds like there's contact being made, but as we bring him down out of turn three, going to turn four, he he's gonna put. Whatever in God's name he's running tonight, the Rattlesnake in the 21. Robert Kahn will be your race winner. Dakota Bra will be your third, second place finisher. Third place going to Rance Brantlinger. And we've got contact made by Rupert and Bichner out of the front stretch there. We got serious trouble down there, guys. Watch out. Finisher, OC, and Rouse top five there. Robert Kahn, Bruh, and Brantlinger are your top three here tonight, and we'll talk with our race winners here in just a minute. And I think you guys might be a little shocked when you hear what the point status is right now because this just changed the game big time for these drivers. Everybody getting all situated out. Robert Kahn. Taking a little victory lap around. And why not? What a victory for him. Finally getting it into victory lane yet again. Only at Daytona did he win. Now he wins at Thompson. Ending that long, drawn-out drought. And you can get a good look at whatever the heck he's got going on with that thing. I don't know whose bright idea was it to put his face on there like that. But it was his, apparently, from what I'm being told from the producers. Robert, are you gonna, Ralph Snake, are you going to give us some burnouts or are you just going to keep going around, my friend? Oh, he puts it in park. Ah, uh, maybe. See, no, I think he just wanted to do a pose for the fans out there. There is your race winner, Robert Kahn, the Ralph Snake, the Pony Express. Your race winner in that 21 machine. Give us one moment here. We're going to put the old instant replay up on the screen for just a minute because we got to pull up our little... Discord. We gotta pull up our little chat here to get down to, to get down to Broadcast City. Here we're heading down to the track right now. All right, I am finally down here in in brought in the pit lane here. I'm just waiting for the drivers to join us on in. Give us one minute here. We're currently. Getting everything situated out. We're trying to bring everybody in. We'll talk with Dakota Bruh and Lance Brantlinger. See how they felt on that race here tonight. Robert Kahn is in pit side right now in victory lane. He has his mic all set up and ready. We're going to talk with him last. We're going to give Brantlinger a two-minute opportunity here to join us. We will see. When he comes by and when he will join us here. Man, oh man, though, folks, that was a pretty good race considering the circumstances, what they were having to work with. They gave it everything they had and when they had to do it. And that definitely shows you the commitment and dedication they had tonight. But I can tell you right now that they're going to be a little shocked when they hear what the points that has just turned into because this completely just changed the game up in a multitude of ways here. All right, we got Dakota Bro now finally in. We're waiting for Brandlinger. We're going to give him one more minute if he does not join. And you guys are just tuning on out. We do appreciate you guys tuning in for tonight. Thank you so much again for choosing us. We hope you enjoyed the series and hope you enjoyed the, the race tonight. Be sure to tune on in Wednesday night for the old school league as they'll bring them on back out for the ARCA series. It's been a long time coming for those guys. and We can't wait to bring them back out on the track for you guys. But next time out, we will see the ARCA boys at it. And still no word from Brantlinger, so let's go ahead and pull in our second place finisher. Oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're down here in pit side here in Dakota, bruh. Man, you just had an on and off good good break, bad break on this track, man. What was going through your mind there for that second place finish? 
Man, this is a hell of a car, man. It's been fast all week, and I uh, got sandwiched in the wall there by Archon there, battling for the lead, coming off the corner. It bent the chassis a little bit. We had to go into the pits, fix her up, and coming from the back to the front, I got involved in two other incidents. It put me at the back even more, so to come back from the back to the front four times and to get second, I'm happy with that. I just I burnt the tires going from the back to the front that last caution and uh, pushed it for seven laps, and to be able to jump like that, it I feel confident with that one and the good old points run. So uh, I'm looking forward to next week for the points battle. Yeah, it definitely seemed like you were really working them on in this entire time. And, you know, points battle wise, you're going into your last race of the season. And actually the points just updated. And I think you're going to be stunned when you hear what you got right now. You're currently in second place by five points to Brantlinger. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a fun battle. I just got to hope for the worst for him. I seen he was in my mirror, and he got into me twice this race, and uh, I'm not too happy with him. So next next week's going to be a fun week. Uh -oh. uh, a lot of door rubbing and stuff. So uh, after the drive through of the bumper twice, I'm not too happy. But we'll go in next week and see what we got, and we're going to try and give her all we got for that championship. Well, you can't, you can't count out too much of what Brantlinger can do, but at the same time, you got to remember that you are one of the more consistent drivers out here, so you just got to kind of focus on what you do out there and what you've been doing, and it seems like it's been working. So who do you want to thank here tonight for the second-place finish, my friend? Hey, man, I got to thank my family, man. Basil roots for me, you know, watching these streams. I got to thank my brother and everybody else that kind of leans back and supports me. And then at the same point, I got to thank Rusty Nuts out of – Anderson, South Carolina, man. It's They build one fast car, and I'm proud to be here, and they do everything they can for me. Yep, it definitely seemed like it. Well, second place finisher here tonight, man. Five points out of that championship. We'll see you next time in USA. Congratulations, O'Hara Thompson, for a second place finish. Hey, thank you, buddy. All right, to go to bruh in the second place here tonight. Let's go ahead and bring in our winner. All right, guys, we're down here in pick three lane. You know what we're going to talk about. It's Robert Kahn, the Pony Express, the Rattlesnake, all in what you will. The 21 of Robert Kahn has won here tonight. It's Thompson and Robert. It's two. You finally got two wins in, and what a way to do it. Wins in, and what a way to do it. Hey, that was a that was a tough track. Um, the high line was a blast there, but it seemed like a good race. I mean, Dakota was fast. I had, like, a little incident with him where – miscommunication i thought he i thought he told me to go by and i thought he was going to be that was going to be cleared but uh it was good it was a fun race though it was a cool track it really was indeed it really was and indeed it seemed to get everything man, figured, out, seemed to get down everything figured out down the end there it seemed like and you had like, a little bit of a battle going you had a little bit of a battle going there what was going through your mind there um well i knew if i could just get to the uh get to the high line i'd be all right um the load line was just so loose that if you got your right front right right on the where the marbles are at it would just rotate and that middle line was it almost felt like it was like the pj1 compound you get your you get your left front left sides on at it would just hook i mean uh, there, there's a lot of grip in the high middle line there indeed indeed sir indeed, like, indeed, like, indeed, sir. Able like, to like to finally able to weigh it out and get it to get it out and get it to but nonetheless uh nonetheless uh this one here tonight bud that's it. Just just a good race. It's uh, ready to move on to the next. 17th in points. Uh, I'm going to knock them dead this season. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There, yeah, for sure. Nonetheless, there, but nonetheless, finally, two and finally, and two coming up soon. Two coming up soon. And we're looking for the first show there, bud. Yep. Uh, just shout out Matt Mills Racing uh, for sponsoring us. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting another one, but just thank them for sticking by us and watching sponsoring us watching the races it's cool stuff so that's all i gotta thank so all right man so all right man there. well nonetheless well, congratulations well, here tonight here and see you next time the last time race of the, the last season. race of the season all right thanks bud all right robert con in that 21 pony express your race winner here tonight all right folks well we're calling it a night here, but before we go, we got to say real quick, and I just now realized our instant replay was still up there that whole time. I do apologize in advance. We got to thank here real quick to our sponsors here tonight over at Matt Mills Racing Team. The best Xfinity Series team out on the market is currently been battling and, and getting everything figured out, especially after a strong showing at Richmond. There's no telling what's going to come next for these drivers. But nonetheless, Matt Mills Racing Team is a proud sponsor here for the PTM Racing Team, uh, Pedal of the Metal Racing League circuit. Thank you so much again for supporting us, as well as going into next season. We do 
appreciate you guys, and we hope to see you guys get that win in on the track. Thanks again to Matt Mills Racing Team for sponsoring us this season. And then, of course, over at our good friends at Paul's Wraps. Thank you so much to Paul's Wraps for all the designs and wraps you've created for everyone here out on the circuits and in the in the world. A lot of you see a lot of cool, unique design wraps. More than likely, they are whipped up over at Paul's Wraps here on on Facebook. If you want to leave the link in the description to go check them out. But if you're looking for a, something at an affordable price, at an awesome looking design, be sure to pick up Paul's Wraps today for more information. All right, guys, it's gonna we're gonna end it there. Call it a night. Say what you will, but that's gonna wrap it up here. So from all of us here at PTM Racing TV, thanks again everyone that tuned out. Thanks to all the pedal and metal drivers popping in here tonight. What a showing and what a battle to say the least for all these guys out here. But for now, we must be able to say, be safe, be good, God bless, and good night. Hold on a minute. Let's well, I think we might have one more company here. Looks like we got one more driver that wants to talk with us here. We're gonna try and finally get him in here real quick. I'm gonna try to get we're gonna try to get Lance Brantlinger in real quick and we'll just give him a chance. Lance Brandlinger, you got a call there, bud? You got a copy? Let's see, maybe we can get a hold of him here. Just trying to get him in here real quick and give him one last chance. I don't think we're going to get it, so I think we might have to call it a night here. No, nothing on our end yet. And well, we're going to call it a night here, guys. So looks like that will be the end. Okay, sorry for that weird um, kind of conclusion there. But nonetheless, everyone at home, thank you so much for tuning in. Be safe. God bless. Take care. Good night, and have a good night, everybody.